Welcome back to another session on Learn Fabric with Tommy and Mike. Good afternoon, everyone, or good morning, wherever you are. Mike, I'm so excited about this session today. This one's going to be good. So we've done a lot of notebook uh, exercises recently. We've done some uh, talking about in um, Data Wrangler and making some data tables. One thing we haven't talked about is writing data back into the lake house. So this episode is going to focus on getting data back into the lake house. Let me turn on my desktop here and you can see what we're going to share today. This is our example notebook. Now we did a little bit of pre-work here and we're gonna walk you through the individual code and steps in code here uh, directly inside our lake house. Uh, some things here that we observed and or pointed out about our lake house, we'll be able to uh, see in real time some of our edits here. Uh, Tommy has also figured out how to jump into our notebooks. One of the really cool features we love about Fabric and particularly the, the Spark notebook experience is we can collaborate and edit things together inside the same notebook. So Tommy can go in here and add notes and comments. I can go through here and execute and run code. All right, let's jump in. As a quick review, we have a command number one here where we need to be able to load some data into a data frame. So let me zoom in my screen just a little bit more so the code gets a little bit larger here. And you can see that we're saying in Python, we're in a notebook right now, and our data frame is listed here as a DF. That's our data frame we're building. It's a Spark data frame. And you can know that's because it's using spark.sql. We're just writing straight SQL against our lake house. So our great lake batting 01 table is the table that we're loading data from. And we're just using regular SQL statements here by limiting the first thousand rows. So control enter on this command. This will then go grab the data from the lake house. It will read that delta table, produce to me a table of information with 1000 rows of data in it. And as it thinks here for just a moment, it will produce to me an output and hopefully it will show me the output here in just a moment. So it's going to run and then execute here this command. So one command has been executed. And let's go, let's see, if, where's the output of this one? Oh, there's no output because I didn't display the data frame. So it completed successfully. We can see that right here with the one second. Next, what we're going to do is now that we have the data in there, we could display it very quickly. So I can just type the word display and then DF. And that will then display the data frame that we currently created. So just running that job here. It will go into Spark and there now we can see our table and this is all of the data in that uh, batting table because we're pulling the data from the batting 01 table in our lake. You'll also notice over here on the left hand side, here's where the batting table exists. All right, cool. Moving on down our notebook here, we will now want to build a little bit more complicated SQL statement. So what we're doing in this statement is we're rewriting or overwriting our data frame again using Spark SQL again, but this time we're writing a full SQL statement. And it's written out as a single line here, uh, but you could you know, put carriage returns and, and make this look a little bit prettier if you wanted from a SQL standpoint. But we're basically selecting the year ID, we're taking the sum of all at-bats, and then we're taking all the hits as a sum as well. We're naming the columns here with the as functions, pulling from our lake house at the end, so from the lake house portion here, and then we're using a group by statement at the end to say, we want to group by column number one or item number one, which would be the equivalent of our year ID in the SQL statement. But now what we'll do is we'll rerun this again. And what you'll notice is we'll have a three column table that will have aggregations much higher than what we had in our previous table. Control enter again. We'll run Mike, our what, what I love about this too, this is just basic SQL too. Nothing different if you know how to do some basic native querying. Yes. Same, same uh, rules and same language. And we're using Python here, but you don't have to use Python. You could select and make temporary tables inside SQL directly as well. Uh, that would also be able to utilize this, uh, the same pattern. However, we're going to write the data back down to the lake house. So in order to do that, we want to stay in Python, particularly in a Spark data frame for now. Okay, here's our table. We just resolved it. And so now we have a single year. Uh, so you can see all of our year IDs in sequence, and we can see how many at-bats and then how many hits were occurring in each of those years. All right, moving down. Um, so the next step here is, okay, maybe we, we like this table. We like the year and the aggregations that we provided in our SQL statement. And now we want to supply that table back to Power BI somewhere else in our lake house. We, we want to materialize this table. That's the language you would use there. Materialize it back down to a physical table that you would push back into your lake house. So now we can change our new command here is now df write. So our next command that we're going to look at here is the data frame. That's the name of the data frame we created earlier. We're going to use the write format and we're going to write it in the format of Delta. And then you can use this command called save as table. And you basically just supply it 
a name for the table. So next, we'll run this command. And assuming if we did everything else right previously, it will now run this command. It will then go through our job and uh, fail, apparently. What did I write wrong there? Did I uh, accidentally update my data frame correctly? Data frame, data frame, write dot delta format save as table batting. Let's see here, what's going on in our Spark job? Maybe there's another table already. We were doing this earlier, so maybe it already exists as a folder level. It maybe hasn't erased itself out of there. So let me just do a quick yeah. thing here. Let me just update my table version here quite substantially. Uh, to make sure we get out of the realm of named tables, because I believe there might be something already there. And as you'll see, there's multiple ways that we can write, save as table, create a new table. And I'm not seeing it there yet. Just quick refresh. Weird. It's failing, but it's showing me the table exists. <laughs> so I'm not sure what it's doing. So it was working earlier. It looks like it still ran okay. Uh, you can see over here on the right-hand side, you can still see my year batting version 10 table actually exists. Uh, so I'm not quite sure what it's doing there. It seems like it's seven out of seven jobs succeeded, yet it's giving me some sort of analysis error coming back. So I think we're actually okay. Um, and if we wanted to go confirm that we in fact have a table, I can go out to my code again, and we can then copy our same command that we used earlier in our commands, where we can select the spark.sql, and we can select the entire frame. So if I'll go up here and copy my code, I'll bring it back down. Uh, let's just make this a test at bat and we'll just make that a, a quick selection here so we're going to go use our great lake and then under batting a one we're not going to use the year underscore batting version 10 and then i'll just get rid of the limit here at the end here and hopefully if we did everything right we'll be able to oh, i should probably display it as well so i'm just going to load the data so it ran the, the command ran but we need to display it so display our new table test at bat and we'll run that. And there we go. We now have our at bats. And so even though I get that weird error message, I'm not quite sure what's going on there, but it still wrote my table and we can see that it showed up in the table on the left-hand side. Always One, check your logs. Always check your logs. One thing you'll note here, when we were doing this, I actually had to go up here to the ellipsis. After I wrote the table, you're required to hit the ellipsis, which is hidden, which Microsoft, don't do that. If you're hiding ellipses on me, don't please don't do that. Uh, the hidden ellipsis, and then you go into the refresh option, which will then refresh the table. So that'll go get the definitions of all the tables that you've just written. So assuming that this all is going to continue to work correctly, let's keep going on. There are other patterns you can use to write data. So this is another pattern here where instead of using the save as table function, we're just saying save. And in this case, what we're actually saying is we're saying save and we're giving it the fully qualified path name of where this data the delta table lives. And you'll notice here, there's this huge long string, A, B, F, S, blah, 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 blah. And then at the very end, you'll see here, it says tables, oops, I cut that off a bit. You'll see it says tables batting year version two. So the idea here is this is the same pattern we're using before, but now what we're doing is we're just giving it a fully qualified path name. Now, Tommy, how would I get that path name? What's the easy way to do that? Well, all you have to find is your hidden ellipses again. So if you hover over yes. a table, <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> yes. Hover over any table, you get the ellipses. And you yep. want to click on that, you can say copy path. Copy path right there. So what I'm doing is I'm clicking that ellipsis, clicking, clicking the copy path. And then what I'll do is I'll just paste it right here. And what you'll notice is it doesn't come in as a string immediately. And you'll also notice here at the end, oops, at the end of this, Tables is team season 01. So this is the name of the table I clicked the ellipsis for. So in order not to overwrite or write data into that other table, which will give you a failure, you actually have to modify the end of this. So you would modify the end of the string slightly and just delete that. And you instead would then replace that with whatever version, you know, new table, whatever the, you know, version you want on there, 01, whatever, you know, kind of information. So that you being see, said, yeah. let's get rid of this text string here and let's try this now. Uh, we'll now try to write version 20 as a table. So we'll hit run again. We'll let it think here again. Four out of four. Okay, seven out of seven jobs have succeeded. And then if I go over here to the table area again and cl right cl uh, click on the ellipsis, click refresh, you'll now see batting table version 20 now has appeared. And again, it's the same data we're having. We're just writing it with a different location. That's pattern number two. We have one more pattern, pattern number three. Uh, also, 
So if you don't want to use the fully qualified path name, you can then abbreviate this one. So you could also say delta path, and you can just use the word tables and then a slash and then the name of the table. So again, I'll adjust the name here so we don't cause any conflicts. Great. So now this is a much easier way to write this. So we're already in the context of a lake house. We can easily write the data back into it. So now I'm going to hit control enter again for the third time. And now we'll write the data for the third time. And then for a job succeeded, boom, done. We'll go back over here and hit refresh on our tables again. And then there's our table version 30. So that just shows you we have all these different tables. Now, as Tommy and I were building this, we we're like, what the heck? Now we have all these tables. How do we get rid of them? How do we delete these things from our lake? So we actually have a couple commands in here as well as how to get rid of some of these things directly from your lake house. So last here is we have another little function here. Now, I don't think you need to have the test equals, but we're just doing this so you can, you know, this is kind of a setting it to a variable. So because we're just executing SQL, because there is no table being produced here, uh, you're just going to get the output of what that SQL command did into that test variable. It's not actually going to show you a table. In this case, we're going to drop one of these tables. By dropping the table, it will actually delete it from the lake on the left-hand side. Now, I don't know what's actually happening at the folder level. Uh, so when we did this earlier, uh, maybe this is one of the reasons why I get that weird error earlier in the, in the table here, because we were actually deleting and removing tables previously. And that table in storage may still be there. So I have to figure out what's actually happening at the files level. So in this case, I'm going to go here to Spark SQL. And if I say drop table, that's the language in SQL that you're going to use. And then you just pick the different version name. So we're going to say drop uh, year batting version one. If I hit enter on this, it will now take a second to run. It'll execute this. And it says, there it goes. It can completed the, the, the run. I'll go back up to the tables click refresh again, and you'll now notice the table in the list is now gone. Now, the reason this is important is because every data table that is being built here is automatically added into the default data set of your um, lake house environment. Because a lake house is three things. Uh, it's, a, it's a lake, storage, and files, and parquet, and tables. It is a SQL endpoint, and it is a Power BI data set. So all of these tables are assumed to be usable in those three areas. And with that, we're basically done. Any final thoughts, Tommy? No, Mike, I think the biggest thing is use caution with those drop uh, and you can easily remove tables very quickly, especially that are important. And then if you're coming from a SQL background, definitely util utilize that Spark SQL commands. There we go. We've cleaned up all the tables except the last one for beer batting 30. If I now go back over to Fabric again and we go into our uh, filter down to our lake house, we have our Great Lake Lake House right here. If I click on this one, you'll see that we have our lake house elements. And if I go back into Fabric as well and go into, let's see, we want to filter for a SQL endpoint. We have our Great Lake SQL endpoint. If I click into this one, which is actually where I meant to go, we should now see our new table show up here immediately in our SQL endpoint. So this will also present that data as well. Come on, load SQL endpoint. Get it done. <laughs> I want to close off this video showing you that it's there. And we probably. Team Seasons don't have it yet. Let's see if I refresh this one. Oh, awesome. So we can't update our schema. So we must have a little bug there. But this should work. And once we update our data table and have our re schema refreshed, we should see our new tables appear here in the SQL endpoint as well in the tables. All right. With that it. that's all of our session for today. Thank you very much for watching. We appreciate your time. And hopefully you learned something new about writing data tables back into your lake house.